Hi, I'm Sam Vokes at Wickham Wanderers, and you're listening to Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to the latest edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show. No game to look forward to uh, this coming Saturday, of course, because of the international break. Uh, big credit to TJ DeBar and also Joe Lowe, who played against each other uh, in an international for Wales and also Gibraltar, respectively, of course. Uh, I say respectfully, <laughs> I've got those two the wrong way around. Anyway, uh, fantastic achievement for them and a great representation for the club as well. Uh, plenty to get through in this next hour, though. We'll look back at that fantastic victory against Stevenage in the EFL Trophy, which gets us through to the next stage of the competition with a group game to spare. Perhaps you're one of the 96 that went to the Lamex on Tuesday night. Uh, if you didn't go and perhaps listen to the commentary with Phil and Brian, uh, our match commentator and head of audio at the club, and other roles as well. Uh, Phil will be joining us very, very soon. We'll hear from the manager, Matt Bloomfield, with his reaction after that game as well and what's in store for the players in the coming days uh, till we next see them in action again. We'll get the thoughts of Killian Phillips as well, who Phil also spoke to after that game. It's a special time for Wickham Wanderers uh, Ex-Players Association. We'll hear from their vice chairman, JDT, uh, as he prepares uh, and the uh, the rest of the committee and uh, those involved as well in their annual dinner, which is happening next month. Uh, We'll get his thoughts on some of the ex-players that we've spoken to in the past weeks as well. Also a busy time for Wickham Wanderers Foundation. You might have seen on social media the 11th of November. Uh, that game has been dedicated to the foundation. Uh, we'll hear from Mark as well, who's the SA, uh, chief executive of the foundation. Uh, we'll continue our uh, uh, following of Wickham Wanderers women. Emily McCartney will join us. She's a defender. She's only 18. She's uh, progressed rapidly from the under-18s to the first team and uh, is pretty well established now uh, in this season. Lots more to bring you as well. We might even have time for a notice board section if we can fit it in but uh, no plenty plenty to get through hope you'll enjoy uh, what's to come in uh, the coming uh, hour or so and uh, we kick off with uh, a word from Phil uh, still riding high on that fantastic 1-0 victory against Stevenage in the EFL Trophy on Tuesday night yeah it's a really good game um, first and foremost first time at the group stage since 2016 so that's a really good achievement and a game to spare but more importantly, it keeps the momentum going, you know, different competition, but a win to win. And it keeps a positive um, feel about the group and also um, the players who, who didn't necessarily start in the league games of late. It given, it's given them some minutes as well to, uh, to, get, to get in front of the manager and the fans and, uh, and stake a claim for when the league game starts again a week on Saturday. There seem to be so many benefits, don't there? We spoke on the night, obviously, about you know how, how the youngsters can, can really impress, but also, as you say, there, there are experienced members of the team as well who, who can really play a part in, you know, obviously, the development of the youngsters as well. Yeah, and when you're in a winning team and around a winning team, you want to be in it. So, you know, you've got to be... You've got to be then be catching the manager's eye as well in all competitions as, as well as training. Um, and as we've all often said, you can't replicate the competitive spirit of a, of, a, of a match at the training ground. So, you know, it's a really good opportunity for players, both new and old, to, uh, to catch the eye and, and stake a claim. And, yeah, I think, you know, it's much maligned tournament. The fans have often um, said they don't agree with it, which is, which is their prerogative. That's fine. And, you know, from the under-21s teams from the Premier League involvement, that's what's really caused it. It doesn't have a sponsor this year, etc. But the, the prize money comes from the Premier League and the prize money is pretty significant as well. Um, and, and Wickham, like I said earlier, with a game to spare in the final 32. Um, and maybe some of the 96 fans that were at the Lamex uh, on Tuesday night may be dreaming of going to Wembley at, the, at some point this season as well. You never know. And there were some names to pick out that supporters perhaps might not be so familiar with, like, like Declan or obviously there's a new goalkeeper as well who's on show. And, um, you know, some of the, the new signings, but also people like Jasper Patton as well, who, you know, great to see him developing as well. Yeah, it's been a really good um, competition for Jasper and it was um, it was interesting to hear Matt Bloomfield speaking afterwards as well and, and saying um, how patient and resilient Jasper's had to be for his chance. He's got a great attitude. He's brilliant around the training ground, well, you know, during training also as a personality. Um, and yeah, he's had to be patient, but you know, when his chance came, it came in the EFL trophy against Crystal Palace under 21s. He gave a really good account of himself that game, and then um, circumstances arose that he then got the nod in the league. And you know, he's played three league games back to back, sandwiched with these two uh, games in the EFL Trophy. So that's five starts in a row from Jasper, and it's been a great learning experience for him. 
uh, and it's been you know equally a good opportunity for the fans and the staff to learn more about Jasper as well. And uh, he's he's grabbed the opportunity with both hands. Declan Skura and Franco Ravazzoli, you know, he's played two games in this competition, haven't let a goal in yet. So um, from a defensive point of view, that's what you want. You know, Franco is great for him because it keeps him sharp in case he's ever needed on a match down the league. Or he'll be on the bench, um, you know, understudy for Max and and hopefully pushing Max as well. And with Declan, a lot of high hopes around this place for Declan. He came in from Kingstonian, picked up an injury and he's been building himself up physically. Sort of very similar to the timeline that Chris Farino had with us. Um, and yeah, people were very excited about the potential of Declan Skura. And after last night, you can see why. But yeah, so things are looking up with the young youngsters especially. And it was interesting to get the uh, the view of Matt Bloomfield after the final whistle. We knew it was going to be a really difficult game tonight. Steve's accumulated a real good squad, a competitive squad. So um, we knew there's going to be changes from their team on Saturday. But still, you've got some real, real good calibre of players to, to come in. Um, so I think they've recruited really well over the summer. So um, really pleased to, to win the two games and get through. We've got a competitive squad ourselves. And so it was an opportunity tonight to, to give plenty of minutes around and also give some experience to a couple of the younger members of the squad so all in all a, a very pleasing night great opportunities for the younger players but over 2000 appearances on the pitch at kickoff as well yeah and, and then that's what we said before the game you know whilst there was a, a you know an opportunity to see deco in another um, competitive game and it was you know a couple of changes from saturday but we had you know a, a lot of class in our team we had a lot of experience a lot of quality you know and um, you know last tuesday uh, at portsmouth you know Keezy, um, gmac Vokes, who was in that game and you know, obviously they were rested on Saturday, but coming again tonight, and it's really important that the boys, you know, they really showed a hunger and desire to want to come and play tonight, um, which I'm really pleased about. You know, the, the 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 desire of the group, the competition for places, and the shirts. You know, having Kesey alongside Deco is invaluable, helping him coach him through the game. You saw on the pitch, he's actually coaching while he's out there. Yeah, so you know, lots of pleasing elements. Is that an underlining of the progression that Wickham Wanderers have made here in terms of its squad and its depth? Possibly. I mean, we're carrying we're carrying quite a few injuries um, at the moment, and obviously, if, you know, three of the boys are away on international duty, so things are a little bit. Uh, the squad's thin at the moment so we have to make sure we protect players as much as we possibly can and, and spread out the minutes but yeah we're really pleased with um, the competitive nature of, of the group you know obviously we, we know that we had a, a disjointed pre-season but I feel like you know people are getting up to speed now and you're showing showing that sharpness you know another goal for folks here tonight we know the quality that he brings but yeah we want to have that, that competition for places because off the back of it everyone improves uh, we talked about a winning mentality at the start of the season he must be pleased no matter what the competition you can come to a, a tough ground like this against a tough side and get that 1-0 yeah I think um, obviously we talk a lot about performance and we and we focus a lot on our performance and, and the way we go about our business but um, in a game you know in the sport and the industry we're in winning breeds belief winning breeds confidence winning breeds winning so we have to be pleased every time we go on a pitch and, and, and win a game of football and like you say it's it's nice to put a little bit of a, a run together you know so for me it's about being pleased with that but also you know I'm going to be very boring I've, I'm just desperate for more really hungry for more we have a, a real desire about us to try and get better we'll, we'll watch this back we're in again tomorrow morning to, to analyse and go through it we have to retain that hunger and desire I know that you know I need to start switching off a bit more but at the moment it's just about wanting more and wanting better and and, and the boys are sharing in that and at the moment you know um, we're on a nice little run but we have to um, get a bit of rest this weekend recuperate try and enjoy some time with our families because when we come back next week we've got a really uh, really good week to look forward to you know we, we've also been uh, organising some behind the scenes you know behind closed doors games because you know one thing that I know is that when you play in that League One fixture you've got to be at it and you've got to be fit and you've got to be firing so these games are, are valuable for the sharpness of, of players who maybe aren't getting enough minutes that they, they feel they deserve on in the league minutes so it's it's about you know putting all those things in the pot and making sure we, we want to go to, to AFC Wimbledon on that final game and, and win again because um, like we say it's good, it's great experience for some of the young lads and it's and it's perfect for to keep topping up the minutes for everyone else Is Jasper Patton the perfect example of that? He got the 90 against Crystal Palace under 21s the opportunity he came in tonight with his fifth start in a row yeah and the week after that we, we arranged a behind closed doors friendly uh, as well where we where we started playing 60 minute games just to to get the boys up to the up to speed of, of match days and Jasper played in that I I must say I, I said to Jasper in training yesterday if if, if there's ever a story of resilience and character then his is exactly it because He's had a number of right wing backs in front of him. He's had uh, a number of opportunities where he's been disappointed. He's had a number of times where he's had to keep fighting and scrapping. And 
and that's the characters and the resilience you want within your group you know because he's getting his rewards at the moment there's obviously still plenty for him to improve on and, and, and he has to keep his feet on the ground but if there's ever a story of resilience and character then, then Jasper's is just that and I'm, I'm very very pleased for him Really great to hear that the manager speaking so positively, you know, as he always does. But it does feel like that, you know, the team are on a real good run. Things are starting to click, and and as Brian mentioned on on the night in the commentary, you know, sometimes there's a concern that perhaps momentum uh, could be interrupted by this this international break. Yeah, and I think that's why it's important that you go into it on a high, um, you know, so you can sort of keep that spirit going. You know, the players will will use the time for training, obviously. So, um, and it's a big run of games coming up now. Peterborough, uh, Oxford United, Bolton in between those as well, and then Cambridge back at home. So it's, it's a really big run of games, as they all are, because we've now seen how tight League One is. And uh, I really, really should mention as well, Matt Bloomfield being shortlisted for Manager of the Month uh, for League One, uh, which will be announced uh, first thing on Friday morning. So, um, yeah, great company that he's in in that list as well. But it, again, it shows you that the, the run of form that Wickham Wanderers have been on, um, for him to be included on that list, and uh, it's a great feather in his cap um, just for the nomination, I think. No, absolutely. A really great achievement. And also really nice for the club to have you know players who have been called up as well for international duty, the likes of TJ and Joe Lowe as well. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, really. Um, just goes to show, again, the direction this club's moving in to have these players called up. And, yeah, hopefully they come back safe and sound, uh, in good form, in good nick, and, uh, and ready to hit the ground running back in the league. Uh, really interesting, isn't it, to have this, this break in the fixtures. But as you say, you know, October's quite such a busy month and, and, and not many games at Adams Park either. Yeah, that's a bit of a blow, to be honest. Um, the way the international breaks have fallen, it meant, that Wickham Wanderers have lost two Saturday home games uh, and it's a huge blow for the fans. Obviously, they buy the season tickets or they make arrangements and, and plan long term uh, and there'll be no game this Saturday at Adams Park and, uh, and it'll be on a Tuesday night, which obviously may not be quite as convenient for people um, at the, when they were making those plans at the start of the season. But yeah, it, it also means that we've had to do a lot of travel as well and those journeys can be long, but not when you're winning, it makes it a lot easier. It does feel like as well, you know, looking at the, the results of late, that the, there's a re- obviously there's a, a couple of, you know, the game against Portsmouth, for example, but it feels like there's a real kind of good, positive uh, run and, and vibe amongst the team. Yeah, exactly that. You know, I think Matt Bloomfield said at the start of the season, he wants to create a winning mentality. And, you know, and it's about momentum sport, isn't it? And if you can get that winning mentality and that momentum going your way, then the belief comes with that. And then hopefully a really good long run of results can, can come come to the fore, especially against some tricky opponents in the few, next few weeks. It really feels like, as, it, as we touched on earlier, things are starting to click. You know, as you say, with the, the manager being recognised and, and what a successful kind of period that the club is in, it must give everyone a lift, especially at the training ground. And, and as you say, for those that perhaps haven't had the, the pre-season they'd have hoped, that they can, they're still doing so well. Exactly that, yeah. But, you know, it, it shouldn't really be that much of a surprise to people because... We, we stayed at the start of the season and in, in pre-season that the, the large number of turnovers of players, um, that coupled with the change in management at the back end of last season, uh, a, a lot of change for a club that has been incredibly stable in football terms in the last 10 and a half years. So it was always going to take a little time to settle down. And I think it settled down very quickly indeed. We're at the stage of the season where the table uh, is relevant after the amount of games that have been played and where Wickham are. They're outside the playoffs by, um, you know, by one point. They've got a game in hand on the majority of the teams above them. So it's it's looking good. And, you know, it's no surprise, really, that the young low knees uh, of Fleetwood, Freddie Potts, uh, Killian Phillips, Dale Taylor, um, really key to the performance. And it's, it would have taken them a bit of time to settle into their new surroundings, etc., uh, and, and learn the ropes. And you can absolutely see that they're doing that. And it's no surprise that the results are coming now as well. And really pleasing, I guess, but not perhaps surprising is, is how well everyone settled, considering the, the sort of culture that's at the club. Yeah, exactly. It was a strong culture that these players were coming into, so it was always going to be the case that they were going to take take the lead from that. And hopefully their parent clubs will see the benefit of that as well when they go back at the end of the season and they'll see what a, what a great environment it is at Wickham Wanderers for players to learn and develop and, and progress, you know, not just on the pitch, but, but off the pitch as well. Wickham Wanderers have always put a huge amount of faith into into what a player is like in terms of their attitude and their work rate and, and their personality, etc. Um, and it's been really fascinating to see these youngsters be embraced into the environment here at Wickham. I appreciate your time. I wish you a very happy international break yourself. 
Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Good news. We'll hear more from Phil on next week's show. You can hear more from Matt Bloomfield at That Chat on Wanderers TV, where you can also hear an extended version of his chat with Killian Phillips after he caught up uh, with Phil after the game on Tuesday night as well. Lots of changes from both sides tonight, but a really competitive game and incredibly tight at times. Yeah, fair play to Steven. It was a decent game. It was it, like, in fairness, EFL trophy games can probably be a li- little bit like friendlies but I think in fairness today they, they gave us a good game so so credit to Stephen and credit to the boys as well for because it's tough going from Saturday, Tuesday Saturday, Tuesday again so fair play to the boys as well From a personal point of view though 90 minutes in the tank and building on a really good performance on Saturday Yeah I'm delighted I'm delighted. this is my first, first 90 minutes since April so we've missed, a, missed all the pre-season with, with, with an injury uh, with a concussion so it's more relief than anything because you know it's I need to just keep building on building on my performances, but I'm, I'm delighted and my first assist as well. So uh, now I'm delighted that I can can help the boys out. Yeah, I was about to say talk us through the goal, folks. He uh, with a great header, but he put it on a plate for him. I think he made it a better cross than, than it was to be fair to him. Uh, now in fairness, folks, he's folks is unbelievable. You, you stick it in there, you have a, you have a probably higher chance than with him in the box than anyone else in the league. So that, that's what that's what I think. I think we can do more is whip balls into him because he's, he's just unbelievable in the yard and, and, and credit to him, it was a great header. Winning is a mentality. We won Saturday, we've won here tonight, albeit in a different competition. How important was it going into this international break to have those two wins? Yeah, that's what we, we just need to keep doing. That's that's what we're building a culture here and, and, and we want to build a, a winning culture and we think that's that's what we're starting to do now. We're starting to come come together, obviously, look. Like, a lot of the boys came in late in the window and, and stuff like that. So uh, now I'm delighted, delighted but nothing, nothing better than winning. So I'm delighted, yeah. And we've got another game to go in the group stage yet. Yeah? Knowing that we've already through, does that give a bit more of a relaxed vibe into the game or is it all out for the win for that one too? Well, I'm sure the gaffer, gaffer will be honest. But if I'm playing in it, I'm, there's nothing I love more than winning there. So I'm sure that if, if I'm playing in it, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk me, me socks off and give me 110 percent yeah. And will he be on the stereo uh, back at Marlow Road this week? We've heard some interesting tunes coming up the stairs. Uh, me, I'll just, just look me all this mix. Uh, I miss home, so I'm, I'm home tomorrow. So uh, I'm sure I'll get a few more tunes off. I'll feel the boys back home, so I'm delighted. Yeah. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Tuesday evenings from 7. Hello, Phil here from Wickham Wanderers, host of Ringing the Blues, which you can listen to right here on Wickham Sound every Tuesday from 7 till 8. We'll have all the action from the game at the weekend, plus a whole host of players and guests associated with the club, plus our weekly feature, Till Death Us Do Part, where Wickham fans remember their favourite memories. Only on Wickham Sound, 7 till 8. The Wickham Wanderers Show, Thursdays from 7. Still to come on this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show, we'll catch up with Chief Executive of the Wickham Wanderers Foundation, Mark Gateskill. Also, been speaking this week to Emily McCartney, who is a uh, now established member of the Wickham Wanderers Women First Team after uh, working her way up from the under 18s, only 18 herself. Uh, all that and more to come. Uh, but first, uh, our usual feature with Wickham Wanderers Ex Players Association, busy preparing for their annual dinner, which is next month at Adams Park, celebrating 30 years of the club in the football. League, and I've been speaking to uh, JDT John Taylor, who's the vice chairman of the organisation. And uh, first, we'll get his reflections on uh, some of those who we've spoken to in the uh, past few weeks of this series of the Wicked Wanderers show. Well, it's strange that Colin, because every week I think, oh, who the heck are we going to have on? Oh, might they be a bit dull or not have too great of memories anymore? And uh, suddenly you chat to them and all these different things come up and uh, and hopefully we point you towards those. And, uh, th- I mean, that, there have been so many. I mean, even a couple of weeks ago, Gary Thompson in the car park of some pub, you know, with the lorry uh, revving up behind him. I mean, even that was a, <laughs> a slightly different one, wasn't it? There has been no news of what happened to the lorry, but... Uh, no, well, knowing Gary Thompson, he would have charged his way <laughs> through it. But uh, it was lovely to hear him. And the the thing about this is that that fans soon forget a player because the new ones come on, 
and then suddenly they're reminded like for instance last uh, th- this week when uh, Joe Lowe won his uh, Welsh International Cup and uh, people were saying well I wonder who the first one was and the first Wickham International uh, was Mark Rogers who played for Canada and Mark Rogers actually tweeted and uh, did bits saying oh well done to Joe Lowe you know it's great that yeah, Wickham, it was a fantastic thing when I, I won an international cap. Now you've got two players actually facing each other from the same club, and that same club is Wickham Wanderers. And it really brings people close together, doesn't it? It doesn't matter how far geographically uh, they are, whether you know we've spoken to Steve Guppy and Andy Kerr, who are you know the other side of the Atlantic, or you know whether it's an ex-player who still lives in Downley, or, as you say, in Gary Thompson's case, up in Kendall. Well, the thing is that, uh, I mean, Andy Kerr, for instance, um, we kind of resurrected, if you like, his interest in the football club because, you know, he left the country, he went off to Indonesia for years, uh, now in British Columbia. And um, he, the last time I spoke to him a few weeks ago, is trying desperately um, to get here for our annual dinner, which is on uh, November the 24th. And... Um, uh, as a failsafe, I know Phil Catchpole has already done an interview with him, uh, which um, we're going to play, I think, in, in this show over the next couple of weeks. But um, we're hoping that he will also be live at the dinner. You know, coming all the way from Vancouver Island uh, for a club that he played for over 30 years ago. I mean, that's just fantastic, isn't it? And this does lead us quite nicely onto uh, plans for the dinner. Uh, how, how are things going with that? Well, as always, uh, I get to August and uh, I don't really have an inkling about what we're going to do. And I know I go to the meetings and they say, well, what have you got planned? And uh, I'm kind of thinking on my feet. This time, the 30-year anniversary was pretty obvious. A lot of the players... I think feel a little bit disappointed that the club itself didn't recognise that in, in in any particular way. But as I said to them, we you know we are doing exactly that. And the great news is that we're going to have over 250 people there remembering what happened in 1993, which of course was the great double winning side under Martin O'Neill, and they. Uh, won the trophy for the second time in three years. And more importantly, they got promotion to the Football League. And that has changed the fortunes of the club unbelievably. I mean, Wickham Wanderers was always a fantastic amateur club, one of the top ones in the country. But to be honest, you have to be in the Football League these days to make any impact whatsoever. And if you think back to the sides that they used to play, and people who are big rivals, you know, Slough Town, Hitchin, Dulwich Hamlet, you know, where are they today? Wickham are in the Football League and have been now for 30 years. They got to the Championship, and to be fair, they were unlucky. I, you know, I'm still remembering the robbed goal against Derby County and the dubious decision against Middlesbrough, uh, which would have kept them in the championship. And the second year inside the championship is when you start making the money. And, uh, you know, but even so, to be now ninth, I think it is, or seventh in the uh, Football League, League One, is uh, is fantastic. But tribute to those boys from 1993, who under Martin... Uh, achieved that first step. I think what's been really interesting as well, we've been fortunate to speak to, you know, already so far in, in this series of the, of the show, a number of those uh, members of that, that squad, but also the manager as well. And, and talking, to, talking to some, it doesn't feel like that long ago. Yet sp- speaking to others, it seems like almost a lifetime. Well, it's strange because we, we talk now, and I talk regularly to most of those players, and their memories of it are as clear as daylight. I, I mean, they remember tiny little things that happened. And, uh, I mean, we've got an interview, as I, as I say, coming up with Scotty um, in this programme in a couple of weeks' time. And he, he remembers, 
just really, really kind of odd things. And uh, I think this is going to be of great interest, you know, to fans who see what happens on the field. But we, uh, I, I mean, 30 years ago, and uh, I mean, I agree with you, it, it, it was only yesterday, really, wasn't it? But I, I was lucky enough, because I was working in TV at the time, to actually be asked to video you know, the occasion um, and the whole trip to Wembley. And, um, uh, and I pulled in a lot of favours uh, from a lot of people. And we went into the dressing room and I treated it just like I would do a programme for the BBC or for ITV. But looking at those shots now and you know, me doing some of the interviews and Hutch doing some of the interviews, uh, I'm thinking, you know, I, I can't remember those. And then suddenly it all starts flooding back. Or I'll think, what a stupid question that person asked. And I was the stupid person. It's that kind of kind of thing. But, um, uh, I mean, that trip to Wembley, we, I mean, we went to, um, I think it was Sopwell House, where the England team used to do stay before internationals and uh, we were there for a couple of days before the the match at Wembley and as I say I treated it just like I would be doing a, a cup final preview for um, a, a big TV company and looking back now and you know seeing Scotty with short hair and uh, a bit slimmer um, and some of these guys and still seeing them today and as I say the stories that they had then, that they still remember today. I mean, this dinner that we've got on the 24th, which I will plug again, I have to tell you that, A, we have already got more people signed up for that than we had attended last year or the one pre-COVID, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, that, I think, is a credit to the fact that Martin O'Neill is coming that the uh, uh, major members of the 90s squad will be there. But also, we will have players from the 50s onwards. And I mean, that is uh, quite incredible. I had a letter uh, a couple of days ago from the PFA saying, um, we think a few clubs in the country have ex-players associations. Could you tell us if uh, the same applies at Wickham? And I wrote back a bit of a snorty letter, really, saying we believe we are the largest ex-players association in the country. And we're talking about an association that does things with ex-players on a regular basis. As you know from Vince and uh, John Bignall and others you've spoken to, we have a quiz, we have a bowls tournament, we have a golf tournament, we have the annual dinner we do all the things around the ground on a Saturday. Uh, uh, Keith Samuels and Vince organise with John Bignall the tours around the ground that happen in midweek and on Saturday mornings. The, these are things that we do on a regular basis. That as an ex-players association. And there, I don't think, well... Uh, big, the big clubs have ambassadors in their lounges, the Gary Mabbots at Spurs, um, David O'Leary at Arsenal, people like that. But they don't, I think, cater for large numbers of ex-players. And we welcome back ex-players. We have 12 in the box for every single home game. Um, and uh, it's something we've driven uh, from 2000 and well 2008 we began talking about it 2009 we actually started um, and it, it's you know it's gone on to great things and this dinner will have players as I said from the 50s we're going to have players from the 70s squads the ones who played against Jack Charlton's team uh, under Brian Lee we're going to have team, people obviously from the 90s and uh, from the OOs So uh, the whole uh, area of, if you like, fan interest, doesn't matter whether you're in your 20s or in your 80s, there are going to be people there who will be hopefully of interest and 
they will be sitting next to you. You'll be able to chat to them. You'll be able to talk to them and ask them, do you remember that goal you missed against Corinthian Casuals in the semi-final of the Amateur Cup in 1957? Cool, blimey. Or, you know, remember the goalkeeper who dislocated his shoulder? There are all sorts of things like that. And, and I just think, from Wickham Wanderers' point of view, that is fantastic. And the fundraising, obviously, is a big part of what the Ex-Players Association is about as well, whether it's you know buying things for the club or medical equipment. Absolutely right. And this is one of the things that drives us. I mean, we've, we've raised now over 50K over the years for various charities. We've returned this year to one which is very relevant, which is Prostate Cancer UK, um, as you know, uh, Matt Cecil's dad, Alan Cecil, uh, reported that he'd, he'd got it and was being treated. Alan Parry, uh, who, uh, as you know, was a former director and uh, TV commentator, worked with him for years. He um, has been affected by it. And yesterday, um, a great friend of mine, Steve Ryder, who I work with at both BBC and ITV, announced that he was having to have an operation this weekend with that very disease. I sent him a little note, uh, and he came back and, and, and because I said it's going to be our charity again this year, and that's money we're going to raise at the dinner. And he said, look, if you want me to do anything there or at any time, I'm more than happy to do it. Um, and, of course, uh, you know, we've got dear Bill. Um, so you're absolutely right, Colin. You know, that is something that we are aware of uh, and we want to make more people aware of um, and raise funds in the meantime. It won't be like uh, the uh, wonderful marathon from Wembley Stadium to here, uh, which was absolutely unbelievable and, you know, quarter of a million pounds raised. But we're doing our little bit. So how can fans find out more about the, the dinner and perhaps get along? Well, they can uh, message me. We have our Facebook page, um, uh, Wickham Wanderers Ex Players Association. On that, you can message any of us, in, including myself. Um, that's what. That's one way. They can obviously phone me up. They can uh, get me on uh, on normal Facebook or normal messaging. Um, or the club will give them any numbers that uh, if they want to talk to uh, to anybody in particular. And remember that you know this isn't a one man band. You know Alan Hutchinson, John Bignall, John Maskell, Vince Faulkner, Keith Samuels, all of these very very heavily involved, and several other newcomers now on the committee as well. Well, after being lucky enough to attend last year, I can I can certainly certainly uh, verify the fact that it's a fantastic event, and I definitely uh, definitely recommend it. Great. Well, I I hope you will enjoy it again this year. It, everyone is everyone is different, as I said. We look at a different event each year. That's our theme, but we do give people time to break up and chat to others around the room, and uh, and this year uh, amongst our guests. We've invited Matt Bloomfield and Richard Thomas, and uh, they've agreed, um, subject to all the normal things that happen to football managers, that they will be there as well. And uh, we'll be interviewing them to uh, talk about the present as well as the past. And once again, if anyone does need any assistance with finishing their desserts, I'm also happy to, to provide that service as I did last year. <laughs> Good man. Brilliant speech. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Colin, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in a few weeks' time. Online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM, this is Wickham Sound. Final part of this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderer Show. If you've just tuned in, you've missed so much. Uh, we've heard from Phil, from Matt Bloomfield, the Wanderers manager, JDT, John Taylor, the vice chairman of Wickham Wanderers X Players Association, looking ahead to their uh, annual dinner. Still to come, we'll hear from Emily McCartney, who's a defender for Wickham Wanderers women. Uh, they've had a really good start to the season as well. If you have just tuned in now, though, there is a podcast version of the show available, so you can catch up. Uh, it's usually available from, uh, well, tomorrow, if you're listening on the podcast. 
the other day and uh, you can get all your Wiccan Wanderers news that way but first uh, the Wiccan Wanderers Foundation uh, the charity arm of the football club uh, they, they've had a very busy time and uh, Mark Gateskill who's their chief executive can tell us more every time of year is busy for the foundation we are literally 365 days a year with sort of new staff new projects kind of coming all of the time so I know that you had had Carl on to talk about I think our street soccer programme which is uh, another new addition to the portfolio if you like and great to be able to support a, another community group so you know we're we're trying to help people who are either homeless or at risk of homelessness so a really worthy cause in it and uh um it's a great partnership with another charity called street soccer who are who are nationwide and link up with lots and lots of, of professional clubs so we're really happy to be finally on that on that list and rolling with the programme. It was actually on in the room I'm sat in right now about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Fantastic. And obviously it's, uh, people get excited, don't they, when the, when the football team make new signings. But I know you made, you made a new signing, a few new signings yourself to, to strengthen your team. Yeah, I mean, we've um, we've made signings across across the board, actually. So I've got, got some new trustees. I've, I've been delighted to secure the, the former mayor of Wickham, uh, Arif Hussain, as our new chair of the board. So he'd sure enough, put down the medals of, of mayorship and came across to, to be chair for, for, for the foundation. So he's a, he's a great signing for us. Obviously got fantastic community connections. And bottom line is just, just another great person. You know, he's got sort of great values and, and, and I think he can be, be, be a really great addition for us and, and help us kind of keep pushing with the, um, almost spreading, spreading the word of the foundation in terms of our, our, our community presence. So, he signed up. We've we secured Martin O'Neill, which I know we've spoken about as our, our honorary president, and we've got um, an exciting event planned for February with him as a foundation fundraiser, alongside another new trustee, uh, a gentleman by the name of Alan Parry, who a lot of football people will know his name. Uh, a lot more people will know his voice. So he was a, a former commentator for the BBC, one of the football voices of my childhood, alongside John Watson. So sitting with him in the room face to face is strange because his voice is so familiar but you don't really kind of know him hadn't really known until I'd met him what he looked like as a person he's going to be part of that event and uh, I'm really excited about that and that's going to be a be a great great event for us and then I've got a number of new staff who who've come on board we we've, we've just employed a, a female football development manager who's taken charge of our girls and women's provision which is thriving and 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 is really kicking on and we're sort of strengthening our links with Wick and Wanderers women uh, with the women's team so that relationship is getting stronger and hopefully we're going to have a kind of seamless pathway from from our provision into the women's team which is which is great so yeah we've um we've been almost as busy as Mr Bloomfield <laughs> and it must be around sort of 12 months of your own your own anniversary in the role as well I did indeed. My my anniversary was yeah, a matter of, of weeks ago, and, and honestly, a year's just um, just absolutely flown past, uh, come and gone in an instant. But um, it's been a good year. But I think in some ways the the second year is is harder because the first year, you know, there are some maybe some easy wins and some quick changes that you can try to make to try to get get people on side. And then now it's about maintaining and kicking on when there's maybe a level of of comfort now amongst the organisation with with the with the new leadership. Um, so, yeah, I had a a, a good uh, CPD session with my guys at the start of the season, and just almost right. We're nil nil. We 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 start again. We've had a great year. We pop it in the bank and and let's go again. So, you know, we're we're, we're very ambitious as a foundation. The, the relationship with the club is fantastic. Which, as you can see on the pitch, the club is ambitious. So. If, if the club is is driving on and kicking on and performing on the pitch, we've got to do the same. And I guess you probably don't get a chance to reflect, but do you, do you feel really pleased with what you've achieved in, you know, you've changed obviously the name and, and the branding and, and I think more people, I think, know about what the foundation does and, and how it can really benefit people in the community. Yeah, look, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think so. I, you know, I, I think I've told you a few times, I was, I was told we were the best kept secret in Bucks, which as a charity trying to help people and, and obviously our, our, our presence and people knowing about us is really important. So that label I, I didn't really like. Now, look, I, I can't take the credit for that. It's been absolutely a, a team effort across all of the foundation staff and with some of the key figureheads at the club who I work closely with. I think we, we have spread the word and we just want to keep that going. And which leads us quite nicely onto sort of a, a bit of a special day on the 11th of November. Yeah, look, I, I mean an outstanding example of some of the things I've just talked about there in terms of 
you know, the club relationship, et cetera, and our aspirations to, to, to grow what we're doing. The club came to us with an idea for uh, for a foundation day. So uh, a fixture takeover, if you like, but we're not, we're not taking over the fixture, but it is going to be foundation day and an opportunity for us to kind of continue that, that, that awareness raising of the foundation and what we do and how we do it and who's involved. And, and lots of our participants are going to be here on the day. So an opportunity for them to hopefully wave to the crowd and for the crowd to kind of see the the volume of different community groups that we're out there trying to support and, and help and try to increase our, our kind of engagement with, with the fan base. You know, we want people to get involved. We want people to, to support the foundation or reach out if they're in need of help and support, because we're, we're fortunate that there aren't really any restrictions in terms of what we can do. If there's a community group that needs help, we're in a position to help them and football's a a powerful engagement tool, as you know, but it's not just football what we do. There's lots of things we do that are football. I was going to say, there, there seems to be almost too many things to talk about, but you've got, you know, just looking, for example, at the moment, you've got these October um, soccer schools, which I see there are some limited places for, and that's kind of, must feel a bit like sort of your bread and butter. But as you say, there are so many things that perhaps people aren't aware that, that you're involved in. Yeah, um, I mean, we operate in so many different settings. We had the, the Warm Hub, you know, it's for... For over 65, that was last year, we have a, a, a project with Aylesby Prison uh, that runs on a Friday. I've been to visit that programme myself, which again is, is, is fantastic. We've got really young young children having their first experience with football with our sports participation team. So from sort of three, four years old up to sort of gifted and talented players uh, who, are, who are aspiring to, to maybe have, even have a career in the game. Yeah, it's a real, real wide range of, of, of groups that we work with. So, I, I, I'm, and I'm sure I'm missing some off there. But yes, it's, it's an exciting season ahead for sure. I think something that really stands out as well that I was lucky enough to sort of see first time was the, the the skateboarding that was at um, Millbrook School as well. That was that was really not not least seeing seeing um, Sam Vokes on a skateboard, but obviously the, the youngsters who were involved and got so much out of it as well. Yeah, look, that, that's a that's a refugee skateboarding program. Again, you, you know, you don't associate that with Wickham Wanderers Football Club, do you? But we are. We are delivering that. We work in partnership with the, with the Skateboard Academy, and yeah, that 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 program made Sky Sports News last year on on Week of Action, which is actually upcoming for us again soon. So that's an an EFL initiative that's kind of mandated across the, the football league, where all the professional clubs kind of showcase what they're doing in the community, and it's it's a real central focus for the whole network that week. And that was one of our our programs that got picked up for, for coverage last year. It was, I think, maybe my second month and I had one of the star players from the first team on a skateboard and was kind of like, oh, if he falls off and gets injured, I, I might only last uh, two months. But fortunately, he didn't get injured and it was it was really great. And part of why we actually um, awarded Sam Vokes our Community Player of the Year award a couple of weeks ago at the, at the Carlisle game. So Sam, like I said, refugee skateboarding. So we had skateboard Sam. We had... Coach Sam, he's been down coaching our, our EDA program and we've we're supporting him with his, his coaching license. And, and you might remember Fireman Sam as well, who was out with the, the Fire yes. Brigade, thanking them for for their support last year. So I think he was a he was a he was a fitting uh, benefactor of that award this year. And it was nice to present that to him before the Carlisle game. And uh, and and by the way, he had a belting game after I think he scored, and he was definitely my man of the match that that day. So. We'll, um, we might mock up another award uh, for a couple of weeks' time. No, definitely. And you mentioned the Warm Hub, obviously. That must be something that you were so proud of as well because, you know, just the, how pleased people were to be involved in it. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we were, we were delighted with that initiative last year. Really pleased to be able to kind of reach out to, again, like non-football people. You know, you were there, I was there. Most of the people there, you know, weren't Wickham fans, weren't necessarily football fans, hadn't been to a football stadium before, but their first experience of that was to come for a you know for a social space where they were getting a free meal cooked by the by the club chef. They were meeting new people, having a great time for sort of three hours, two times a week, all kind of geared towards tackling that that cost of living crisis that we know you know is real. So um, yeah, look, we're we're close to securing funding for that again. Um, so so I hope that we'll be able to announce that fairly soon because obviously these, these, these programs cost money. So you have to reach out to funders and backers and people willing to support them. So yeah, obviously we've got proof of concept now because we, we did it last year and it was, it was a great success. So that makes 
that process of trying to secure funding that little bit easier because you can evidence the, the need and the benefit. So yeah, we, we're we hoping to, to do that again and, and make it even bigger and even better. It's so fantastic how many different sort of sections, if you like, of the community you can help, whether it's, you know, the older generation or, you know, I think the, the walking football program is fantastic and, um, you know, just even sort of social or, you know, just me- mental health support, obviously, which is really big as well. And, you know, I've got, I know you've got the facilities at Adams Park as well for those who, who perhaps, you know, want a quieter space to come watch the game. You know, it really does cater for, for all supporters. And as you say, perhaps people who aren't even, you know, come across football before. Yeah, I, I always come off these conversations kind of going, oh, I forgot that one or I should have said that one because we, we generally we do so many different types of provision and they're all important, you know. Obviously, football's a, a, a key vehicle and, we, and we're and we really proud of our, our sports participation programme and our, our kind of pathway for people's first experience in football up to, like I said, some, some, some talented players that train with us sort of regularly during the week. But we're equally proud of all of those other initiatives across our other two departments, which are our education department, education and employability, and health and inclusion. And that's sort of broke into health and well-being and, and inclusion and cohesion. So we've got four strategic aims. And we're really proud of all the provision that we do across all of those four. And is there anything you can tell us that you've got coming up in the, in the coming weeks or, or in, in terms of sort of uh, initiatives? Yes. Yeah, so, well, Foundation Day, the big one that you mentioned. So there's a lot of planning going into into that at the moment. We've We've actually been developing a, an, an educational product with the, the football club, driven by the football club, but with our supporters, obviously, we do a lot of work with local schools. Um, that's going to be exposed to a, a select group of school principals on the, on the 24th of uh, this month against Bolton. So we've invited some, some local principals to come and, come and see that. We're really excited about that. We think that's going to explode and, and could go across all the, all the schools in the local community, which which is great, um, with some, some fantastic support from the players. We had some fun with the players this week for, for another um, product, which we're, we're going to be producing for uh, Foundation Day. So I'm, I can't tell you any more about that because it's top secret, but I can tell you it's, it's really cool. Very nostalgic. It's, a, it's something I remember doing at school, but that's all I'm going to say. So that, that, that should hopefully be, be for sale on the, on the 11th of of November and, and that'll be raising funds for the foundation, which obviously just goes back into the, into the community. Yeah. And the, and, and the event with Martin O'Neill. So I'm hoping to announce that this side of Christmas, uh, I think that's going to be the hottest ticket in town and the lineup is not full as yet. So I'm, 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 I'm still working on that one, but that's a, that, you know, as a, as a charity kind of fundraising is a, is a key part of what we do. So we, we kind of, I guess we've, um, Pick that back up. I think it hasn't been a been a focus for the last couple of years. That was, you know, we were affected by by COVID as everyone was, but we're we're now really back focused on 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 raising funds for the foundation ourselves for our own programs. And, and Martin's come on board to help us do that. So so yeah, look out for for that event and then another one towards the end of the season. So just ahead of the foundation day itself, what what do you hope the main message that both you know supporters and you know perhaps first time uh, watchers, if that's the right word, you know, take away from what the foundation is and, and what you do? Look. I think the, the, the key thing for us on, on that day is, is raising awareness and educating people on, on the foundation. Like you've said earlier, hopefully our, our word is spreading and there are more people knowing about the foundation and what we're doing. But there's definitely still some and probably some within the fan base that don't know that much. So that day is really going to be a, an opportunity for us to expose to the fans what we do, why we do it and, and how we do it. So where can we find out more? Uh, you can find out more at our website, which is wickhamwanderersfoundation.co.uk or on our uh, social media platforms, and that's at WWFDN. Brilliant to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Colin. A pleasure to have Mark Gateskill on the show, of course, as always, Chief Executive of the Wickham Wanderers Foundation. As he said, do keep an eye out for uh, some of their events, including uh, hopefully news of the return of the Warm Hub and uh, a brilliant event featuring Martin O'Neill, their new honorary president, which is uh, uh, set to come in the new year. As Mark said, uh, there should be an announcement on that before Christmas. Sounds very, very exciting indeed. I don't know too much about it, but it does sound very, very exciting. You can tell, can't you? Uh, finally, for this week, we'll uh, cast our attention to Wickham Wanderers women. Uh, they've had a good win in the Cup, uh, the Women's FA Cup. They are uh, putting together a decent run in the league as well. And Emily McCartney, who's a defender, uh, made her debut last season, becoming more and more established uh, in this uh, first team, having worked her way up from the under-18s as well. Only 18 herself, and uh, as you'll hear, is uh, rather enjoying life uh, in with the first team. 
Honestly, yeah. Like, I mean, everyone's just so nice. Like, no one, you know, they always like <laughs> pass the ball to you and everything. You know, there's no, it doesn't feel like there's any divide or anything. Have you noticed much of a difference? Is it, be, or is it quite similar to to playing like you know in the under 18s or in the under 23s? Or there's definitely a step up in like just like especially like the teams you play against. I don't know you can just see there's a bit of like a a difference. And have you noticed your own progression as well? Oh yeah, for sure. Honestly, like it. I don't know just like the defending principles. You know, like the Carl goes on about like pressure cover balance. And like, I just feel gone so much better at that. That must be so rewarding as well for you to kind of notice your your own sort of development and, and how, as you say, how you've kind of fitted into the team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, just like looking at my performance, like thinking back on it, like last season to now, I feel definitely improved. And are there particular matches or moments in matches that really stand out and you thought, oh yeah, that was, that was a real good test for me or I did really well there? I mean, definitely um, the... Uh, like two weeks ago, the match against Ascot, the FA Cup, I just I was in a good good headspace that game. I felt it was it was really good and nice to beat Ascot. <laughs> I was going to say really nice for you as well because you know you come up against Ascot in the league and, and perhaps didn't do so well and and they you know they were sort of flying I guess but to, to sort of face them in the cup and, and to win must have been a fantastic feeling for all of you. Oh my goodness, it was amazing! Like the, the changing rooms was oh it was such good energy. <laughs> And to be a defender as well, obviously, you know, get all the glory scoring the goals, but but to prevent prevent goals as well must be equally rewarding. Yeah, I think that's my definitely my favourite part of football, like in a match, making those big tackles and stuff. Yeah, it's really good. Does it feel like last season was a real sort of season of transition, especially for the first team, and, and now you're kind of established and, and everyone kind of knows their roles, I guess, and, and what's needed? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, we've had lots of new players and people in new positions, but I feel we're finally starting you know we're getting wins it's it's like we're really starting to work as a team and what really really comes across as well is that you know you've had a number of new signings throughout the, the close season and and they've kind of really settled in and gelled and feel part of the group already as well oh yeah yeah everyone that's come in has has played so well you know and again it just it feels like a team that have, we've been together for longer than we have and does it feel for you as well like a really good time to be involved in obviously Wickham Wanderers women, but also just women's football generally, especially after the, the World Cup and, and the Euros, obviously before that? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I I just love playing football and like seeing like all the 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 wee girls do their game before a match, like the little training session on the pitch. It's just it's just amazing, you know, seeing everyone get involved in a sport that I just really enjoy. And what's been your own kind of football journey, if that's the right expression? Is that something you, you kind of picked up from a really early age or you just kind of got into it? Or Honestly, it was pure chance I got into football. Um, in my junior school, they just like they just started off a girls team and they had no players. And I just enjoyed sports. So I was like, sure. And then, I don't know, one thing led to another and I'm playing at Wickham. <laughs> and what was it like finding your position? Because I guess people, you know, they kind of perhaps set out with, oh, I'd like to be a striker, or I'd like to be a goalkeeper. But it, it must be strange how perhaps initially you didn't have an initial kind of position in mind that you, you thought you best suited to, and perhaps it found you. Yeah, I mean, I cannot shoot to save my life. So, <laughs> <laughs> defender, and I don't know, I just, I've I've never been good at like all the wee stepovers and, and stuff like that. So I think just, you know, just being like, solid defending tackling passing it just it just really fitted me so you couldn't see yourself changing we spoke to amy last week she used to be a center back and is now center forward yeah no i don't think i could do what amy did <laughs> i mean i'd give i'd give striker a go but like i don't know there's just something about defending i guess it's it's the only position i've ever really been but i don't know i really enjoy it a really fantastic for you to get the win uh, on sunday as well and again another clean sheet too Oh, it's so, it's amazing we're getting the wins now. I I feel like the team's really worked for it as well, you know. Been to training, we've put in the time. It's it's nice something's coming out of it. And do you set yourself kind of personal goals or, or things you'd like to achieve for or with the team as well? Not in like the the long run, but like each match I tend to set myself a goal. It just helps me like play better, you know, like I'll try and do more pass backs to the keeper or do more long balls that match you know no absolutely and do you kind of approach games differently depending on who the opposition is or obviously I guess you kind of do your research on them but especially with cup games because it'd be nice to have a good cup run wouldn't it yeah oh my goodness yeah that'd be that's the dream um 
I I don't know. I try. And, I, I can worry about games a bit sometimes. You know, like then you get in your own head about it and you play worse. So I try not to think about if the teams we're playing against are like particularly known for being good. I just kind of, you know, go in and treat it as just another football team. To be honest. Do you, do you anticipate that the, the teams you'll be coming up against this season, it'll be particularly particularly tough? Or do you think that, because, as you say, it's quite an established team that you're in now, you, you, you can literally sort of, you know, you're confident that you can take on any any comers? Honestly, I, I, I really believe Wickham is like, I mean, if we play like, you know, you have you have good games and bad games, but like, us on a good game, I feel we could, we could take on pretty much anyone. <laughs> And are you aware of the increase in interest in, in women's football, but specifically, I guess, you know, Wicked Wonders women, because, you know, I know that you've had sort of the, the brownies come and watch you. And, you know, I know that like, young girls come along and say, oh, I'd like to be able to do that in training, what they see you do, for example. Oh, yeah, it's 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 actually so sweet. It's, it's amazing, really. Like, I've definitely noticed just women's sports in general. I'm seeing it a lot more on social media and having the brownies come it's just amazing remembering being that age like if I saw like people like more women playing football I think I would have gotten into it a lot earlier because I guess you probably don't think of it yourself as well but to be someone who's you know 18 and, and playing in the first team as well that, that must be quite a sort of a, a real sense of achievement for you and and you know for other youngsters to kind of look up to to what you've done and think oh maybe I could do something similar myself oh yeah I mean I've if I could just say it to them like you can absolutely do it like I didn't you know I'm just another person you know I haven't done anything special to be here like just go to training and and you really can do anything it's a great advert isn't it that sort of the hard work you put in the hard work and you can you can achieve uh, achieve stuff yeah yeah that's that's really all there is to it just hard work and have you noticed as well an increase in support this season? Because I know that the 1887 came along to home game, didn't you? And, uh, I, understand, I understand your father is particularly vocal at games as well. Yeah, he's he's got a bit of a name for himself being loud on the on the sidelines. It's great though. I love to hear it. <laughs> I was going to say it really must be a real boost to a to have that sort of family support, but also just to you know to have any kind of support and people you know knowing that people are behind you. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's amazing. Like. I think there's definitely noticed an increase of like the the crowds that come to home games and everything. It's it's really awesome. It must feel like you're on a real wave at the moment as well, with you know in form and some great results and and being unbeaten as well and not conceding too many either. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's just keep let's keep winning. Let's keep the clean sheets going. You know. No, that's fantastic. It's been brilliant to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to chat to Emily from Wickham Wanderers Women. We'll have more from them, obviously, uh, throughout the coming weeks on the show. Very much enjoying following their progress, both in the league and currently in the Cup as well. Hopefully that continues too. Uh, we'll speak to more of their players and coaching staff and uh, Craig as well, who looks after the media. You might have seen uh, them on social media as well. Bobby Lynch, the uh, current captain, scored a fantastic goal. You might have seen, again, on social media very recently. Hope you've enjoyed the show this week. It's been brilliant to uh, reflect on Tuesday night's victory in the EFL Trophy and uh, obviously recognise the brilliant achievement of TJ Debar and Joe Lowe playing against each other for Gibraltar and Wales, got it right around this time, uh, in an international a brilliant advert for the club. As Phil mentioned, Matt Bloomfield has been uh, nominated for the Manager of the Month. Uh, that will be announced tomorrow, or if you're listening on the podcast, that was announced on Friday morning. Uh, we keep our fingers crossed for that. Uh, congratulations, commiserations, depending on when you're listening. Uh, and uh, also looking forward to next week's game as well. Thank you so much for uh, listening and uh, look forward to being with you again next week. Up the week. <laughs>